Thank you all for being here today. My name is Sloan Paval. I'm the Zero Waste Program Manager with Zero Waste Sonoma. And in case you are not familiar with us, uh, we used to be known as the Sonoma County Waste Management Agency. We are a government agency that works with all of the cities and county to divert waste from our landfill through programs, grants, education and outreach, as well as ordinances. And um, right now I'm joined by Zinzi Tan, who's our uh, organics program manager, um, in case there's questions related to um, compostables that come up later on. Um, <clears throat> As you know, we are here to discuss the Zero Waste Sonoma Polystyrene Foam and Disposable Food Service Wear Model Ordinance. Um, some housekeeping notes, uh, the webinar is being recorded and will be uploaded later to the Zero Waste Sonoma website. And all attendees are in listen only mode. Uh, but if you, if you do have questions, make sure to drop those into the chat um, or the Q&A and um, we will do our best to answer those all after the presentation. <clears throat> so at a high level, um, this ordinance will support a statewide goal of 75% waste reduction, as well as zero waste and climate action goals at the county level. We know that there are a variety of reusable, compostable, and recyclable options for virtually all polystyrene foam um, or styrofoam products. And when this material escapes into the environment, it easily breaks down into increasingly smaller particles, uh, which are almost impossible to collect once they are littered. And <clears throat> when plastics such as polystyrene are ingested by wildlife, including sea animals, um, they eventually make their way back into our food chain and eventually onto our dinner plates. We conducted a public survey on proposed ordinance requirements back in 2018 and found that a large majority of respondents supported restrictions on polystyrene foam, uh, accessory food service items provided on requests only, and um, paying restaurants a fee for compliant containers. So at this time, most of Sonoma County jurisdictions have adopted the ordinance and others are on track to adopt in the coming months. <clears throat> and uh, there's another slide later on that kind of details where everybody is at. Um, so here's what is covered in the ordinance. Uh, first, food and beverage providers are prohibited from using or distributing polystyrene foam food service products. Number two, retailers are prohibited from selling single-use polystyrene foam products, including plates, cups, to-go containers, coolers, packing peanuts or other shipping supplies and pool toys that are not encased in a durable material. Number three, single use for food service ware must be locally recyclable or compostable. And these compostable uh, plastics or paper board lined with PLA are not accepted. Um, number four, compostable and recyclable single use food accessories like straws, lids, utensils, and to-go condiments are to be provided only on customer request. And number five, um, the city facilities and contractors must also adhere to these requirements. As a way to encourage reusables, um, as well as help owners recoup the cost of switching to compliant food service wear products, We've included an optional takeout container credit for customers who provide their own coffee mug or other container or fee for any combination of single use items provided to the business, uh, provided by the business to the customer. <clears throat> and earlier this year, the Zero Waste Sonoma Board approved an amendment. The primary change to the ordinance is the addition of a prohibition on the use of food service wear items with added per and polyfluorinated alcohol substances, also known as PFAS. These chemicals are commonly used in the production of food service wear for the purpose of liquid and grease resistance. Unfortunately, PFAS, also known as forever chemicals, persist in waterways um, and the environment due to their prevalent use in common consumer products. 
Um, these chemicals are linked to liver and kidney cancer, decreased fertility, thyroid problems, and decreased immunity. Several states have passed legislation limiting PFAS, not only in food service wear, but in other items. And finally, there are many private companies, including Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, Chipotle, Albertsons, Panera, and Taco Bell that are taking steps to phase out um, these chemicals from their supply chains. So here are some common examples where PFAS have been used in recent times. And uh, actually, the state of California, um, <clears throat> its use has been banned from firefighting foam, cosmetics, and currently in, in the legislative session, lawmakers will be voting to ban it in carpet and rugs, as well as all paper food packaging as well. And one other important change here is that we replace compostable or we replace biodegradable or compostable throughout the text. Um, biodegradable is an unregulated word that is often used by manufacturers to mislead or greenwash consumers into thinking their product is more sustainable. And that was one of the reasons why we replaced it. Also, the compost facilities that accept material from uh, Sonoma County dictate the types of material that are included or excluded from the stream. These facilities, by and large, prefer to sell compost for use in organic agriculture because there is high demand and the price averages about $25 per cubic yard versus $5 per cubic yard for non-organic compost. And so those compostable plastics and PLA products disqualify the compost from that organic designation, which is why compostable foodware in Sonoma County must be comprised of uncoated, fiber-based materials such as paper, wood, wheat straw, bamboo, or palm leaf because it doesn't have the same designation. So as you can see, the majority of Sonoma County jurisdictions have adopted the ordinance. Sebastopol was the first to adopt in 2018, followed by Healdsburg and Petaluma in 2019. Um, however, Petaluma has only adopted the prohibition on the sale and use of polystyrene foam. Overdale and Windsor have adopted the model ordinance in 2020, right before COVID hit, um, which definitely delayed adoption in the other jurisdictions. Um, and then just earlier this year, Sonoma adopted, and very recently, the city councils of Santa Rosa and Cantati have approved the ordinance um, during the first hearing. So it would just be coming back for um, the second hearing um, for its official adoption in those two jurisdictions. And it's important to note that Santa Rosa has adopted a more stringent version of the model ordinance, which requires reusables for on-site dining, um, as well as some other minor changes. So we will be um, posting that on our website soon, um, highlighting those differences. And then as you can see, Ronert Park and the county are scheduled in the next couple of weeks. And I believe Petaluma will look to schedule in the fall for the remaining uh, sections. Um, here's one of our out outreach materials showing preference for reusables and then single use recyclable and fiber compostable are great, um, but polystyrene is going away. And Graphic rich materials are most helpful to businesses um, is what we found. And we wanna demonstrate here that the cost savings of switching to reusable, uh, reusable food service wear um, is achievable. One exciting opportunity to note here is that Zero Waste Sonoma is offering a first come first serve grant of up to $250 per business to support the transition to reusables until the funds are used up. Can we reach our, uh, our cap? <clears throat> um, eligible expenses include a variety of reusable food service wear items, bulk dispensers, self-service bins, dishwashers, and payment to um, th a third party for um, supporting that reuse. Here's a re visual representation of some of the compliant uh, compostable food service wear products. You see that they don't have that shiny lining and they are just fiber only. 
Here's some examples of recyclable food service ware items. We're really looking for one through six plastics and aluminum only. And this is a list of foodware distributors and some of the types of compliant products that they are able to supply. This is also available on our website to download. As far as outreach, um, you've seen some of the educational materials we've developed and posted to our webpage. Um, however, you can also find guidance for non-restaurant retailers, grocery and convenience stores, and price comparisons for download on our downloads and graphics page on zerowastesonoma.gov. Um, we've presented this ordinance to councils for consideration mailed notification letters to businesses where the ordinance has been adopted or is likely to pass. And we've also coordinated with local chambers and the Economic Development Board at the county in order to amplify the message um, in addition to some um, direct outreach to businesses as well. And as far as enforcement, um, we are working with the jurisdictions to provide the education and Pre-enforcement activities, <clears throat> excuse me, which is our focus for the remainder of this year. Um, with the notification letters, we hope that the businesses will take necessary steps to comply as well as reach out to us with questions. Um, however, this enforcement actually starts with the public complaints, which are logged through our um, form on, on the website that we host. <coughs> excuse me. Um, so what happens is a member of the public will fill out the form and kind of identify the non-compliant product that's being used at the business. Um, we get that information. We reach out through a call um, and letter to the business. If they request um, additional assistance, <coughs> they request additional assistance, we are able to provide that. And we monitor these um, conversations. And the next time a complaint is received for the same business for the same type of um, violation, we will kind of go through that process over again. And then we will actually turn it over to the jurisdiction's code enforcement body. And at that time, it would be up to the jurisdiction to continue the, to do the outreach or um, actually present a fine um, to that business. So kind of it's out of our hands at that point and it um, becomes a compliance issue, a code compliance issue at the jurisdiction level. <clears throat> so that kind of concludes the presentation. Um, and now I think we're ready for some questions. So let's see if we have any, anything in the chat, <coughs> I'm so sorry. I'm not seeing anything in the chat. Doesn't look like we have any Q and A's. Um, there looks like there's one question in the Q and A. Oh, okay, that one. How do we apply for an exemption? That's a great question. Um, so if you go to our website, zerowastesonoma.gov, um, actually I can just, do this and I can do another screen share for people instead. Okay, we'll go back on the screen. Okay, so <clears throat> from our homepage here, zerowastesonoma.gov, the easiest way to get there is from our menu button. Um, that drop down form. And then under policy and regulations, you'll see complaint and exemption forms here. Um, the first form is the, the one I mentioned about the non compliance. But if you scroll down underneath that, um, this is how you get to that exemption form. Just fill out the name of the business or event, phone, and all of these other details here. Um, and then please include, if you, if you can, provide a description here. Um, and then that way we receive that from the back, uh, from the back end, and we would be happy to um, log that and um, also share that with the, the appropriate jurisdiction for um, 
for their records. So those exemptions are valid for uh, one year um, from the date of application. And um, in some cities, um, it's allowed to reapply at the end of that next year. Um, I think I, only Santa Rosa is coming to mind that they're only going to be allowing, I believe, one year of an exemption. So um, that might be a, a question for the jurisdictions, but that's the first way, the first place to start. Um, okay, looks like we have a question on PLA food service products. Um, I would like to send this over to Zinsi, who's our organic program, uh, organics program manager, to provide an um, an answer here. Thanks, Zinsi. Sure. Yeah. So. PLA, uh, for those of you who don't know, um, stands for polylactic acid, and it is a manufactured polymer, um, plastic polymer that's made from uh, plant materials like corn or soybeans. And um, even though a lot of them do say compostable on them, and you know, in the right conditions, they are compostable, the problem is here in California, organic agriculture is uh, really big, especially in Sonoma County, I'm sure you know. So when I say organic agriculture, um, the farmers are not using uh, pesticides, right? And they're not allowed to use synthetic materials. So compostable plastics are considered synthetic um, by the National Organic Program, which is run by the USDA. And so these compostable products are not allowed uh, in composting facilities that want to produce compost that is certified for organic agriculture. The reason being that organic compost sells for a much higher price than non-organic compost. So um, generally, organic compost is about $25 per cubic yard, whereas non-organic compost is about $5 per cubic yard. So there's a very big financial incentive for compost facilities uh, to keep their compost organic. So in our program in Sonoma County, in the green bin, whether it's residential or commercial, uh, we do not allow compostable products for that reason. So I hope that answers that question. And I just wanna add, it also has to do with supply and demand. Um, there's such a high demand for organic compost. It's just not the cost. It's that there's just high demand for organic compost which is why um, that's what composters make is organic compost. <clears throat> Thank you both. Um, I see a question from Larry. Um, is there a plan for next steps like ban on single use products other than polystyrene? Um, at this time, there isn't really um, a next steps for the ordinance um, other than what I've, um, I would say, you know, going with the, the Santa Rosa model is, and since they're taking a more um, stringent approach to this, I think um, it's, it's of interest for other jurisdictions to sort of take this existing model and maybe in the future make an amendment to require um, reasonables for on-site dining. Um, I think that's another way to Kind of make this existing ordinance go a little bit further than where it is now and that seems to be kind of the leading edge on this type of foodware ordinance at least in the in the bay area from what we've seen um <clears throat> as far as single-use products i'm not um I, I don't think that we do have um, a plan to target anything specifically um but next year if, if maybe some of you haven't heard next year on the 2022 ballot, um, there will be something called the Plastic Pollution Initiative, which is an extended producer responsibility um, requirement for manufacturers of single-use products to pay into um, a fund that would require up to one cent per item produced. And <clears throat> the funding would go to support municipal recycling programs and um, expand markets for recycled materials in California. So, um, you know, if, if that could happen at a statewide level, I think that'd go a, a long way to sort of help this cause as well. Um, so hopefully that, hopefully that answered that question. Um, <clears throat> okay, I see a, another question from Shay Robinson about, <clears throat> her question says, food service where, oh, 
online, your guide says food service were not regulated by the ordinance. And I just want to clarify, this is um, on the grocery store and um, retail convenience store um, material that we created. So it says the following items are allowed, plastic wrap, containers, seals, paper wrapping, tray liners, and bags for bread. Um, baked goods or other items are not regulated by the ordinance. Fiber compostable lids that are PFAS free are strongly encouraged. Um, she goes on to say, but this is not stated as explicitly in the ordinance. Do we need to apply for an exemption for these items? Do tray liners, including cake boards or the boards cakes sit on? <clears throat> I would say um, these items are, this is slightly different than what we um, are originally targeting, but I would say you don't need to worry about the um, application for an exemption on these items. Um, since we've already posted this guidance on the website. Um, and so I think, yeah, you're, you're fine um, with that one. <clears throat> Guy Tillotson says, have you considered making an award and awarding a, a zero waste complete, compliant window sticker for businesses using the proper materials? <laughs> um, I think that's a really cool idea. Uh, we've kind of been trying to brainstorm um, a way to highlight those restaurants and businesses that are sort of exemplary in this um, space. And I think a window sticker could be a really good idea. Um, there's going to be a, an article coming up soon in the North Bay Business Journal, I believe, that will be highlighting some of our um, stellar compliant businesses. And um, yeah, we'll have we'll have to have a, a talk about um, other ways that we can kind of elevate that and um, show other businesses kind of what they can be, uh, what what what's a good model for them. <clears throat> Thanks for the question. Uh, Lydia says, "Have we gotten any feedback from the local health department re regarding reusable containers for to go food?" <clears throat> That's a really good question. Um, we, we have been in touch with the health department regarding reusables, and um, it's sort of an in-development situation. Uh, I'm going to have to circle back with them, especially with sort of these recent changes on um, mask mandates and the Delta variant. So I, I, I think this is going to have to be an ongoing updated situation. Um, we know that the virus doesn't spread um, from surface contact, so that's kind of one reason why I think it's important to con continue in the path of reusables. Um, but we have to act in accordance with what the health department is saying. And technically speaking, right now there is nothing, there's nothing, no health orders in place that um, prohibit reusables. So. Um, you know, you should be able to be using your your um, clean, re, uh, reusable bags, coffee mugs. Um, I know that there are some restaurants that are accepting um, people to provide their own containers for takeout items and things like that. Um, it's best to call ahead and and see what their procedures are, um, <clears throat> and hopefully, you know. We can continue to move forward on this rather than backward. Um, I know that, I mean, bulk bins are allowed again. So um, if you don't see that in your favorite grocery store, uh, definitely talk to somebody or put a comment card in and ask them when they'll be returning. Um, hopefully I answered your question. Saloon, can I just jump in here? I'm not sure if um, you mentioned that there is a, there is a state law that allows for reusable containers to um, be used in a food service, uh, you know, store. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think right now it's all kind of touch and go with COVID. So maybe I yeah. should, I'll send a link. I'll put it in the chat. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I guess since we're on that topic, I, I will also mention another um, opportunity for reusables, which is um, <clears throat> an organization, it's a nonprofit organization called 
plastic free restaurants and they um they are offering something pretty cool right now and that is a let me pull it up here it's a um basically a reimbursement to restaurants who are using reusables or, or who want to transition to reusables. Um, I think they re will reimburse up to 50% if it's a plastic uh, reusable or up to 100% if it's a non-plastic like durable item that can be washed. Um, and oops, let me just make sure I have that right. Um, so if, <clears throat> If for, you know, for example, um, our, our $250 reimbursement, um, our, our grant program um, runs out, I think that's another uh, way that restaurants can get dialed into um, that transition to reusables. Um, so I just wanted to share that as well. Um, if you want more information on that, it's plasticfreerestaurants.org. Um, and they also highlight some of the case studies as well um, from Rethink Disposable and like the cost savings of um, reusables in a restaurant setting. So um, those are some other cool resources that you may be interested to check out. Okay. I saw a question pop up and then it went away. Did you? Yeah, out? sorry. I oh. um, shared the link. Uh, so it's in the answered uh, tab. Sloan, you see it? Oh, I see it now. Okay, cool. Yeah, so Lydia did ask about um, uh, Recology taking compostable utensils. Uh, do you want me to take yeah. that as well? Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah, so um, Lydia, to answer your question about whether we've talked to Recology about taking compostable utensils, um, again, it's not Recology that determines whether or not we can take those materials. It really is up to us, Zero Waste Sonoma, and the composting facilities that we work with. And as I mentioned previously, because the composting facilities don't want those materials, um, we are not allowing them in the program. So. Uh, so Recology right now is just um, following what we are seeing. So no compostable utensils. That's right. Um, yeah, so Leslie did mention in the Q&A that fiber-based utensils are okay. So if it's say like wood or bamboo, um, those kind of encoded fiber utensils are okay just not compostable plastic, not PLA. Okay. So, did you answer, there is a question in the chat from Anita about outreach materials. Oh, I'm sorry, I did not see the chat. <clears throat> oh, why can't I see it? Can you read it to me? Oh, here we go. Is there printed outreach materials we can pick up to distribute or only on the website? Um, you know what, Anita, we need to do probably some more printing. Um, we are sort of in process of um, hiring or, or onboarding our, our new marketing person. So I think once we, once we do that, we'll be doing um, some more runs of printed materials. Um, I think a public outreach like fold a uh, folding something to let them know about it, kind of high level stuff is something that we want to print, and so that we have that available for um, for you guys and for the other haulers and just any outreach events. So um, thank you for bringing that up, and um, I'll I'll keep you in the loop as we as we just uh, you know move forward on printing stuff. <clears throat> okay. I'm not seeing any more questions um, in the chat or in the Q&A box. So I think we're gonna wrap it up a little bit early, but um, if you guys do have some questions that you think of later or you wanna get in touch with us, um, please email zws-foodware at sonoma-county.org. Um, 
or call 707-565-3375. Um, that's the best way to get in touch with us. And um, thank you all again for, for being here. And um, oh yeah, here, I'll just I'll take that email into the chat. And <clears throat> hopefully you got that. Um, and I think we'll we'll just end a little bit early, but um, like I said, contact us if you have any other questions that come up later. And um, most of the things you might be able to find on our website um, or on those download the downloads and graphics page if you want to um, print any of those things out. So um, thanks again, and uh, we'll we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.